Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this series we're making snake in Unity. In this video, we're going to spawn some food and have our snake eat it. Let's begin. So this is our scene so far. We have our snake in here and we can move it with the keyboard. It follows all the movement rules, such as you cannot directly turn back, so if I'm going to the right, I cannot go straight left. I have to go up and then I can go to the left. So now that we have the movement working, let's add some food for our snake to eat. Essentially, the food will be spawned somewhere random on the grid. So let's create a class to handle our level grid. So a new C Sharp script and name it our level grid. This will be a simple script, so let's remove mono behavior. And now in here, we need to store a position for where the food is spawned. So we can simply do a vector to int for our food grid position. Now let's make a function to actually spawn our food, so a private void spawn food. Now in here we will set the food grid position. So in order to randomize we need to know the total size of our level, so let's create a constructor for the level grid. And in here we're going to receive an int for the width and an int for the height. Let's sort in fields. Okay, so now we can go here and generate a random grid position. So we do our food grid position equals a new vector to int, and inside we get a random dot range between zero and width, and then a random dot range between zero and the height. Okay, so we now have a completely random position for our food. So now that we have that, let's add a visual. So we are creating a new game object named food with a sprite render component. So now for the sprite for our food, let's go into the game assets class. And here let's add a new field for the food sprite. And back into our level grid, let's use that sprite. So we now have our food game object using the correct sprite. All we need is to locate it in the correct position. So I take the game object dot transform and set the position. All right, so this should be working. We have our spawn food function, which generates a random food grid position and then instantiates a new game object and gives it our transform position and the correct sprite. So now obviously, let's just spawn food as soon as we start our level. And for testing, let's try spawning a bunch of food just to make sure our food grid position is correctly randomized. In order to do that, let's do using code monkey so then I can go down here and use a function periodic. The action we will fire will be the spawn food, and let's call it once per second. All right, so this should be great just to test to make sure our random is working correctly and we are instantiating a new food. Now, obviously, the one thing we need is to actually create our living grid object. So for that, we're going to go into game handler. Again, this is a script that is simply on a starting object. So we can use this to be our code entry point. So in here we create, let's store our level grid. And we're going to instantiate it in here. And for the width and height, we have defined as 20. And also in our scene, we have to go into the game assets and drag our food sprite. And yep, just like that. Okay, let's test. Yep, there's one piece of food and another one there, another one there, another one there. And yep, they are being correctly randomized. All right. So now that we can spawn food, the next step is to make the snake eat it. So back into our level grid class. So let's make a function that will be triggered when the snake moves. And we're going to receive a vector to int for the snake grid position. So our snake will trigger this function after it moves. So when the snake moves, we want to see if the snake moved on top of the food grid position. If that happens, we want to destroy the current game object. So let's store this as a member variable. So we destroy the current game object. And then we call spawn food again. And just for testing, let's do a pop up to make sure we see that the snake ate food. And over here, we no longer need this testing. All right. So when we instantiate our level grid, we are calling our spawn food, which generates a food grid position and creates the game object. And then we have a snake moved function, which is called by our snake and it sends the snake grid position. And we simply check if the snake is in the exact same position as the food. 
If so, we destroy the food game object and we spawn another piece of food and just a debug to see that the code executed. So all we need to make sure all of this works is to go into our snake class and make sure we trigger this function. So here on the snake class, let's go to where we are handling the grid movement. So here we are, we change it, we modify the transform. So in here, we need to have a reference to our level grid object. And later on our level grid object, we're also going to need a reference to our snake. So in order to do that, we need to ask ourselves, how are we going to handle the references? Now, there are two ways we can do this. We can add a static instance to the snake and the level grid and call our functions as static, or we can pass in references when we instantiate our object. Both approaches will work just the same. In order to keep the code as simple as possible, let's go with the second approach. So in order to pass in our references, let's go into our game handler. In here, we are instantiating the level grid, and we can also add a field for our snake. So we now need to pass a reference to the level grid for the snake and a reference for the snake to the level grid. So let's first pass in the level grid to the snake by creating a simple setup function. So up here, make a public void setup. And in here, we're going to receive our level grid. All right, so very simple function, just to make sure we pass in the reference to our snake. And on the game handler, all we need to do is call the snake.setup function and pass in the level grid. Now we need to do the same thing for our level grid. So let's do the exact same pattern. So in here we do a public void setup and in here let's receive our snake. So just like that, our objects now have the references that they need. And obviously on the game handler, you need to go into the level grid and call the setup and pass in the snake reference. So in here, in our snake, we can now go down here when we handle the grid movement, we modify our grid, and then we tell the level grid that the snake has moved and we pass in our grid position. So again, our snake handles its grid movement, it calculates the time and so on, moves in a certain direction and ends up in a certain grid position. After it moves, it calls the snake moved function on our level grid. And in this function, we receive the snake grid position and we know our food grid position. If both of them match, then our snake has eaten the food, so we destroy the food game object and we spawn a new food object. So let's see if all of that is working correctly. Okay, so here I am and there's the food. Now I move the snake towards the food and yep, it has eaten and another one spawned and another one has been eaten and another one there and so on. So as you can see, everything is working correctly. All right. So now that the basics seem to be working, we have one potential issue in our code. In here on the level grid, when we are spawning our food, we are just picking a completely random position. Now what that means is that we might be unlucky to spawn right on top of the snake. Now obviously we don't want that to happen, so let's fix it. We already have a reference to our snake, so we can just easily ask the snake where it is when we try to spawn into a valid position. So let's go into the snake to create a new function so we can return our grid position. So a public vector to int and let's return the grid position. So now here on the level grid, let's do a cycle for making sure that our position is valid. So do randomize the food grid position while the snake.getGridPosition position is the same as the food grid position. So while the snake grid position is the same as the food, then run this code again and generate the new one. So in essence, we're only going to leave this cycle when this position is not the same as our snake grid position. So down here, we can make sure that our position is valid. So just like that, our food should never spawn on top of our snake. Now, the one issue we have in our code here is with regards to our spawn food. We are constructing our level grid, but only after constructing do we give it the snake reference. So we cannot spawn food in here, because if we do, then our snake will be null and it will cause an error. So we simply spawn the food on our setup instead of on our constructor. So let's run the code and see if everything still works perfectly fine exactly as previously. All right, there's the snake. I can move it around going towards the food and eat it. And yep, there you go. The snake has eaten the food. Now I go into that one and I eat it. And yep, another one has been spawned. And we can now be confident in knowing that the food will never be spawned right on top of the snake. So there you have it, we added food to our game and the ability for the snake to eat it. In the next video, we're going to grow our snake every time we eat some food. 
As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.